I've been testing out this laptop for a little while now and I'm just impressed with what affordable hardware is able to accomplish as of lately. Here we are looking at a Windows 11 laptop with some underwhelming specs but it's actually capable of quite a bit. Let's have a look at everything that it can do. So introducing the Ace Magic AX15 laptop, let's go ahead and dive right in. The exterior design consists of plastic for the entirety of the build, but I was initially fooled into thinking that this device's shell was made of metal, considering how sturdy and nicely built it feels. It's also very much cold to the touch, as it is getting colder here in New York. This is also a pretty thin laptop that offers a lot of portability to it, so I actually have a lot of great things to say about the build. It's very nice, especially for the price. On the right, you're going to find a headphone jack, two USB-A ports, and a micro SD card slot. On the left, you're going to find two USB-C ports, one for charging and one for data, a USB-A port and an HDMI port, and some indicator lights. On the bottom, you're going to find some intake vents for the fans as well. Overall, I actually really like the overall design of this laptop, and I do think that they did a very good job with it. However, it isn't perfect. I, for one, have a bone to pick with when it comes to the keyboard layout, but we will get there when we get there. For the most part, it's a very good build and design for such an affordable device. This device features a 15.6 inch 1920x1080 IPS display that does honestly look pretty good. This display is colorful and sharp from what I can see. This is also a matte screen, so it really is pretty good at avoiding screen glare. However, it does not have a touch panel, so there is no touch support for that whatsoever, but you are looking at a pretty attractive display that I don't have many issues with either. I think that it is perfectly fine for what you will be doing on this machine and for most people browsing the web and watching content, possibly getting work done like Excel, typing, and more. That's not to say that it can't handle more though. You'll see soon, but in this case, this is a good display with some backlight bleeding. This is a thing with the screen, so keep that in mind. But to me, it's so minimal that it hardly matters, so not a lot to complain about here. The keyboard and trackpad are going to be a mixed bag, in the sense that I dislike one while liking the other and polar opposites. The keyboard is okay for the most part in the sense that button presses feel fine with enough feedback, though it might be just a little more spongy than I would like. I'm not a huge fan of that aspect, but the thing that bugs me the most about the keyboard is going to be the layout. Normally, I use a number pad very often, but on a laptop, I actually really don't like them because these laptops have to make room to fit these pads, hence affecting the position of the buttons. It gets a little cramped, but mostly it just forces me to relearn how to type on this laptop because of how different it is. Everything is just kind of pushed to the side, like the main buttons, which just messes me up. But this was the case with me. If you got this laptop, you will most likely eventually learn how to use it, so I wouldn't fret too much about it when it comes to this aspect, but it's not something that will work for every user like myself. Now the trackpad is pretty good on the other hand. This is because it's pretty big and it has a nice satisfying click when you press it. I actually really like this trackpad and think that they did a very good job with it. Not too much to say here, but it is a strange combination. Great trackpad and below average keyboard. So yeah. Now this device features dual front facing speakers that are positioned really nicely. Unfortunately, they sound pretty bad because they can hardly push out any audio at all. I was actually incredibly surprised with how terrible this experience was. So no, the speakers are not at all why I would get this. Ignore it at all costs. Have a listen so that you can still understand what I mean by that. This device features an Intel N95 CPU, which is a quad-core, four-thread CPU that I have familiarized myself with as of lately. It also comes with integrated graphics, 16GB of RAM, 512GB of SSD storage, and a 38 watt hour battery. This is pretty neat for the exception of the CPU, but we will see that it is actually capable of quite a lot, so let's actually dive into the performance test. Now let's get into PC gaming performance. So first, let's begin with a very easy-to-run game, that being Final Fantasy VI, the Pixel Remaster. This time around, we of course get very good performance with no stutters at all from a game like this. Obviously, almost anything can run this game, so that's not really a big deal. However, it is worth noting because people might really want a machine for playing low-end games like this, which is totally fine. 
but you will encounter screen tearing, unfortunately. It's not too severe, especially for a turn-based game, but it is immediately noticeable, so keep that in mind. With that said, it is kind of strange that tearing with a game like this does happen at all, so let's keep pushing this machine even further to see what it happens when it comes to other games. Next is Child of Light, an indie game. This game just runs really well on this machine, no question around it. Surprisingly, there was no screen tearing here either to mess things up or anything like that, so this game was just an absolute joy to play, and it was very smooth. I think most people will agree with this assessment too, as it does exhibit great results. I genuinely love the performance here, and if anything, I was surprised that there were no issues to speak of when it comes to this game. Really nicely done here. Next up is a PlayStation 2 era game with an enhancement, Final Fantasy XII, and I swear that this is the last Final Fantasy game that I test out in this video. With that said, I had to drop everything to medium settings and 720p in order to get playable performance, but the game still looks great, even compared to how it looks on the Switch. This is actually pretty impressive. I also locked the frame rate to 38 frames per second so that it wouldn't try to push out more frames than necessary. This is good as is, and the performance is pretty good, beyond playable, easily. So it's safe to say that this device will handle PlayStation 2 era games just fine, even enhanced versions. So this is a refreshing aspect, so I do appreciate having this because I play a lot of games for this generation. Then I tested Skyrim, the special edition, and at 720p, low settings, and with no anti-aliasing whatsoever, I got pretty good performance, or at least playable. It really doesn't look half bad by any means on this machine, and I would consider it to be totally playable. So something like Skyrim should do well. I also did not experience any screen tearing, which was nice to see. This game did run how I expected it to, but I sort of wanted it to do well with at least medium settings, but at medium settings you just get less than 30 frames per second, which is not really acceptable. So low settings it will have to be for this game, and most likely every other game that we have yet to test out here. Next on the list is going to be Dragon Ball Fighters. This game actually ran pretty well while at 720p medium settings. It ran at pretty close to 60 frames per second, which is always great to see in a game like this. However, there was definitely screen tearing at times. The game still looks pretty good, but at this resolution and settings, you start to see the jaggedness of the character pretty easily, which does take away a little bit from the experience, not entirely. It's just something that I noticed, but if this was my laptop, full time, then I'd have no problem making these concessions to be able to play this game. Next is Dark Souls 3, and unfortunately this is when we start to see a lot of the limitations of this chip. At 720p, low settings, you can sometimes get a regular frame rate of 30 frames per second, but oftentimes, like in the boss fight, you will start to dip in frames, and then it's just really not playable. So I wouldn't recommend a PC like this when it comes to Dark Souls 3 in any capacity, because you need your PC to always be re reliable. I even got kicked out of the online aspect because of the frame rate at one point, so I just wouldn't recommend a machine like this for something as demanding as Dark Souls 3. Now moving on to other aspects. The battery life is actually pretty decent. I'd say that you'll get around 6 hours of battery life for your usual tasks and web browsing. If you're gaming, expect a lot less, maybe like around 2.5 hours, but that still strongly depends on the game too. However, battery life is fine, and it should last most users a good chunk of the day without issues. It charges over USB-C, so it does at least have that kind of easy support and universal charging, not to mention that the charger is very easy to carry around, so I wouldn't really complain. So to finally conclude this video, this laptop is pretty good for the money. You can definitely do some PC gaming with it, which is awesome to see. With that said, it does have its limits. It's not a Core i7 or a Core i9 or a Core i5 for that matter that we're looking at, but a mere N95 CPU. So the limitations are absolutely there. But what you can expect out of a $350 laptop right? For just about everything else, for students, for those working with spreadsheets and typing a lot, you're getting a great deal for a laptop. So while you shouldn't do any heavy gaming or competitive gaming with this laptop, you can absolutely do a ton with it. So with that said, strongly recommend it. So thank you so much for watching this video all the way up until the very end. I do really appreciate it. And I am going to be leaving affiliate links to Amazon as well as uh, an affiliate link where you can directly purchase from the website uh, themselves from, from Ace Magic if you are interested in that. If you use either one of my links, you would be helping out the channel quite a bit. So I would really appreciate that as well. So links to that down below because it does help us get more review units when you use our affiliate links. It does add up. And also, 
please make sure to follow me on TikTok where I do like to post shorter versions of these videos just because I am trying to build a following over there. So I would very much appreciate it. Now, with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching. And until next time, have a good one. Enjoy.